Hey, it's Joe again, and this is the build for the exterior of the 70s Wright-ish house. It's based on a very loose interpretation of Frank Lloyd Wright, and it's a modest home, and it's really kind of a knockoff. If you haven't yet watched the tour, do go and watch that. It'll give you a great overview and fly-by tour of the house itself instead of the speed build. I decided to make something that I wouldn't ordinarily even want to live in, uh, although the design actually didn't turn out too badly, but I don't really like knockoff uh, designs. You either do it properly, the sort of fake faux interpretations of a uh, style really just don't turn me on. So I tend to ava avoid everything that's fake. Anyway, this, this is based on the Frank Lloyd Wright house, and initially I hadn't planned on, on uh, ha even having a concrete slab. It was just going to be galvanized sheeting uh, to mimic the flat planes. But, uh, you know, houses are what they are and they develop. The left-hand side is the, the main area, the, the living area, and towards the right-hand side are the bathrooms and the quieter, more living areas. Of course, staircases don't fit if you don't cut walls, so there you go. The family room just down below uh, it just doesn't, it's actually part of the entire house. It doesn't have a wall. I decided to leave it open. Upstairs here, I'm building the main bedroom with an ensuite bathroom and a walkthrough wardrobe. The room right next to it is is currently, well, will become a, an office. But you could use this as a nursery. If this is a family home, you don't want the parents to have to go that far to get to their children. There's your flat plane roofs with steel sheeting which is just lovely. Uh, in the game, they, it, uh, I, I hadn't changed the texture yet, so you're still seeing the tiles. I'm building on the slab, which keeps growing, as things do in The Sims. <laughs> you could just keep, you know, if only in life, you could actually just extend slabs like this easily. But there you have it. I just, I, initially, I just wanted a small slab that would run around and wrap around to the front of, over the porch and possibly create a, a small little a covered area at the back and then it just grew you know as things go they grow out of control yeah i'm just creating a, a flat plane for the entrance hall and the there you go there comes the slab getting bigger every every minute <laughs> as if it doesn't cost anything which of course in the sims it doesn't so it just keeps growing it's actually difficult to make these kind of uh, builds because you're trying to remind yourself that this is actually kind of a budget build and it shouldn't really get bigger and bigger. That's the beginning of the chimney stack, which uh, took me a bit of effort because I just couldn't get it to give me the exact look that I wanted. The, the only custom elements in this house is the final uh, roof sheeting and then also the concrete, the large concrete that, uh, um, textures that I used on the roof, which is actually a floor tile. I also use it below in the entertainment area. Doors in The Sims are just so limited, aren't they? The external doors aren't too bad, but the internal doors for The Sims 4 really are horrible. And they're all Hobbit-like. I mean, you know, are Sims really that small? It's nice that they do have the, the tall doors for when you have higher higher uh, you know, rooms, but they're still not particularly pretty. It's just so easy to get the foundations up like that, isn't it? What normally takes weeks, you just pop it up, in a few minutes in the sims there we go making more alterations to the heights if only that uh, that was that easy in real life and again more alterations to the slab the slab just well kept growing what is supposed to be a uh, fairly cheap house and there we go there goes the chimney just turned out to be more more expensive than uh, really envisioned I'm adding a little feature here just uh, to create a few more planes Frank Lloyd Wrightish planes and there goes the chimney eventually the chimney just becomes built in and uh, rather dark what I like about building the, the chimneys sections on the outside of the house is that you can actually place the chimneys on the inside uh, inside the house you can place the chimneys uh, sorry the fireplaces in those recesses because I absolutely hate having these dark tiny little rooms that are, are supposed to mimic columns or chimney stacks of course in reality uh, the you know, the, the chimney would, uh, most of the mantle would be on the inside of the house. But it's still, I think it works quite well. I actually chose not to have many windows in the front. You'll see there's actually only two windows in the dining room. And then the front of the facade is actually fairly, 
blank, I suppose. It's got the chimney there, so the chimney, the front door, and then I covered it up with a, a few plants. I wanted most of the windows in that to face out over the entertainment area. And there you go. The, <laughs> the slab just keeps on growing. As long as you've got simoleons in the bank, the house just keeps getting more expensive. Oh, that just moved a tree out of the way. I wish you could move some of the game trees out of the way. That, that damn tree, yeah, as much as of a tree hug as I am and an environmentalist, I just absolutely load these trees in the game that you just cannot get to go away. They don't drop properly and they're always in the way. I had to edit a lot of the video out to hide the damn trees because they just kept getting in the way and then the game goes completely bonkers and just spins around like a, like a, like I don't know what. There we go. There goes the slab even a little bit larger again. This is going to be the barbecue area. In South Africa we'd call it the braai. And uh, there we go, raising the walls a little bit more. Now, I've also figured, you know, you can cantilever concrete quite a bit. Actually, the rule of thumb is you you, you need to, uh, you can cantilever about a third of the actual balance of the slab that is, you know, under the, under the house or under a first floor. So technically that slab is a little bit larger to, than, than wood cantilever. And that's what the chimney structure is there for. It adds uh, an additional support. Anyway, just a bit of irrelevant architectural information. And of course, the slab gets a little bit bigger because it just looks a little bit odd, doesn't it? So it has to wrap around and then it gets a little bit bigger again. Because why not? Plenty of subodians in the bank. There again, I'm applying uh, the concrete textures and then just um, trying out different variations. There's actually three different textures uh, for those concrete floors. Uh, to provide a bit of variation so that you're not looking at the same repeating uh, tile pattern so that you that's what you saw me painting in uh, some variations that I tried a, a slab over that uh, sort of it's in essence a kind of a chimney for the the, uh, the you know, barbecue area but it just looked odd so I chose a roof plane also in sheeting to match the the rest. I actually plan on doing something similar to this in another one or two Frank Lloyd Wright houses, but just done properly. These just look a bit odd. The fountain in the swimming pool was actually an interesting idea. It, it glows at night. It, it's got its own lighting, so it actually can look quite, quite, quite great at night, as you'll see later. These the, the back of the house really turned out to be quite dull. It's really just a flat wall with windows in it. Which of course have got no privacy because everybody walks right past the back of the house. But this is the sim, so we just pretend that there's some security walls. In retrospect, I actually should have built this house mirrored because the views are actually uh, on the riverside. But it didn't dawn on me until, well, I was just too far. And while you can rotate the, the house on the property, you can't actually mirror it. Which is, would that would really be great if you could just pick up the house and literally just mirror everything over to, to the back. I didn't realize that I needed to make some modifications to the stairs. And uh, that's also another trick to, to putting uh, ceiling lights over the stairs. It, that's quite a mission. I just cut all of that out because it just went on for you know, half an hour trying to get the damn lights overhead. This changed several times. First I decided to make an interesting, a very 70s sort of pattern. Uh, and then later on I actually turned, uh, I thought, well, I've, got, I've, I've spent so much money on this big slab I may as well turn it into a balcony in the double entertainment area upstairs, which leads off the bedrooms. I didn't realize that, well, there's no way out of the kitchen. So here we go, looking for a door. Eventually, the only thing I could find was a, a glass door, since we've got so many windows anyway. You know, clearly, these sims uh, are quite extroverts. They live in a glass block. The hedging also was quite, quite annoying, because it tends to sort of want to fly up onto the the foundation level so it keeps going up and down and up and down and uh, I did fix these trees a, a bit uh, quite a bit uh, late in the game although I didn't show it it's just really dull I had to move them out the way because all the branches were poking through the, the bedrooms you know while it might seem you know quite a novel way to have tree branches over your you know bed while you're sleeping it does look a bit odd it affects the resale value if you've got trees in your house and they're not meant to be there. I didn't do too much gardening really because there just wasn't much space so it was really just trying to blend the edges in the back of the house into, into its environment 
and that's some sort of greenery to it. So it's not really just a sort of early 20th century cold architecture. It's just sort of concrete and glass and flying slabs and a little bit of wear and tear there on the ground. It's always very difficult to create on the very edge of this, the, the property because you can't get the brush outside of the property to, to, to soften, to delete and soften the edge. And it creates too much of a hard edge if you just sort of paint it down. This is much easier to do when you actually have more space on the edge and you can actually just delete off the edge and feather it away so it actually blends in with the natural environment because you cannot obviously change anything beyond the construction line. You know, building regulations are very strict at these things. And there we go. Of course, all this time, the silly landscapers came in and they blocked in the kitchen door. At some time, I had to give them a call and get them to come back and move the damn hedges because, quite frankly, we paid a lot of money for all these, you know, <laughs> pre, pre-grown pre hedges and I couldn't get out the kitchen door. Landscaping in the front a little bit to add a bit of greenery because I just deliberately decided not to have any windows there for privacy. Never mind that, you know, everybody walks straight down the side of the, the house. And there you go. There we go, battling with the foundation. The plants wanted to jump up to foundation level. And then looking for just a few plants that would actually sort of fit in without too much fuss. Initially I started putting uh, the sort of banana rubber plants here, but they just, I need to actually recolor the texture for that uh, palm and the banana palms and that, because they just look very odd, they're very green. Anyway, I just have to have a sort of very typical sort of 70s, since we have no walls to this house, have a little bit of planting in the front. Here we go, I was trying to do the banana plant, but it's just, it looks like a plastic, you know, cut out. I do like ferns. I actually want to do quite a tropical house one day with a uh, lot of ferns. I just wish we had more variation for it. And of course, let's you know, got to decorate up the post box. Since we have to have one in every in every lot, may as well sort of do something with it. And I thought we must have a little bit of lawn somewhere. So we gave a bit of green lawn, just <laughs> literally a postage stamp of lawn after what's left of building the entire house up. Trying to make that a little bit more realistic and then slap some plants down. The trick with this is actually to scale them up and down, although the flowers also get a little bit bigger and larger, which is not necessarily a good thing. But uh, if you scale them up and down, they tend to sort of taper off, which gives you a more natural look. And that's the side of the house done. Going upstairs, having a look at the roof. Um, that bronze roof uh, was changed later on. And here's some screenshots, so enjoy. Thank you so much for watching this uh, build of the 70s right-ish house. If you haven't watched the tour and uh, also the interior that's coming up next, go watch that. And if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please do so and turn on notifications from the bell icon. That way, when I release new content, you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much for watching.